Hi, I'm Kenton, and this is Kenton Knows. If you are new to my channel, I'm a buy and hold investor of apartment buildings that I own and manage in Chicago. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my channel, clicking the bell, and the thumbs up or thumbs down, depending on your preference at the end of this video, and please leave me any comments that you might have. In this video, I will be sharing what I believe is important to have in a residential lease, including a few clauses I have added over the years. I also have separate videos describing how I list my apartments online, how I review and qualify applications, and a video for prospective tenants explaining the application process before they apply. The links for those videos are below. The second half of this video will highlight some of the important clauses I have added to my lease and why they are important. To start, I live in Chicago and the Chicago Association of Realtors has a great lease which is updated each year to comply with the Chicago Residential Landlord and Tenant Ordinance or RLTO. That lease has some important points that you should verify are in your lease as well, which I will also mention, but before I go any further, I strongly urge you to start with a lease for your area that has been reviewed and distributed by a realtor association or apartment manager group. Please do not use a state or national lease unless you have a local real estate attorney review it. But if you're going to pay a real estate attorney, you might as well just ask to use their local lease. If you need to add or edit any part of it, be sure to have your real estate attorney review and help you with the final wording before actually using it. Lease basics. Okay, any lease must have the following. Date, address, start date, end date, rental amount, signatures, deposit, pets, parking, utilities, tenant names, who is authorized to occupy, the landlord name and contact information, signature blocks with dates for the tenant and landlord. I'm assuming you have these covered, so I won't dwell on them. For pets, be sure you specify the type, number, and breed to be clear what is allowed, and if there is a pet fee, that should also be clearly stated. If parking or additional storage is included, specify where it is and if there is an additional fee. If you provide any furniture or appliances, be sure it clearly states that is personal property provided by the landlord. Your lease should clearly state the following which utilities are the landlord's responsibility and which one are the tenant's responsibility. The lease should include acknowledgement that the tenant has received any required disclosures such as lead paint, radon, heat, or any others that may apply to the area in which your rental is located. It should also include when rent is due, what the grace period is, what the late fees are, and the charge for return check. There should also be a description of how the security deposit may be used and when it will be returned. It should include what is an acceptable use for the premises. This should include whether or not you allow the tenant to use the space for shared housing, Airbnb, or rooms for rent. Rules for subleasing. I recommend also having a clause that says no water furniture is allowed. You should have a provision for notice required and the expectation of the condition of the apartment for showings. Reasons for emergency access to the apartment where notice is not required most likely for a water leak, gas leak, or fire. You should also include who is responsible for snow removal and lawn maintenance. If it is landlord responsibility, there should be a timing component to the clause so that you can set the expectation that if it snows overnight, it is unlikely the driveway will be plowed by 7 a.m. when the tenant may expect to leave for work. Security deposits. If you hold a security deposit, you should give the tenant a receipt when you accept it and also show how much is being held on the lease. In some areas, you may also need to provide the tenant with proof of the financial institution it has been deposited at for the records as well, so be sure you know your local laws or rules. In Chicago, the security deposit rules are extremely burdensome to landlords, and the fines are extreme if you don't follow the procedures exactly even when you return the deposit in full with interest. So most of us have stopped holding security deposits. I charge a flat, non-refundable move-in fee of $500 per apartment. Tenants seem to prefer not needing to have two months of rent up front. And for me as a landlord, I don't have to deal with the security deposits, move out walkthroughs, calculating interest and charges, and then mailing back the balance. And as far as liability goes, I don't think I ever charge a tenant even $500 for damages when I did hold deposits, so this isn't a major issue for me. 
and I always had to clean the apartment, so I actually end up making more money with less work by charging the move-in fee instead of holding security deposits. In my experience with Class A apartments, I have rarely had any issues and it's never been enough for me to go after a tenant for damages. Back rent and evictions are a separate discussion. I'm just referring to the damages to the apartment. Specific clauses I have added. Here are a few clauses I have in my lease that I have found to be important. Any appliances on the premises provided by the lessor are the convenience of the lessee, but are not part of the consideration nor rental under this lease. And the lessor does not warrant their fitness nor uninterrupted use or enjoyment, and any interruptions shall not constitute constructive eviction, nor form the basis of a defense, set off, or counterclaim. Leasee shall bear the expense of any repairs to any appliances or to the premises without reimbursement from the lessor. Although this clause is fairly harsh, and I have never had a tenant pay to repair or replace an appliance, it has saved me several times when the appliance failed and the tenant got very angry. Once I had a refrigerator fail in a fairly high-end apartment, and the tenant wanted me to pay for all of his food as well as meals until the fridge was repaired or replaced. Clearly, this was an unreasonable request, but it went away when I showed him this clause and I paid for the new refrigerator. It is also a very good idea to ask your tenants to secure renter's insurance. I must admit, I haven't made it a huge deal when tenants don't get it, but I do have a clause in my lease stating they are required to have renter's insurance. My clause also states that I should be named as an additional insured and it should include window glass coverage. Snow removal can be a point of contention in Chicago. I do have the walkways and parking areas of my property shoveled for the tenants, but there are times when we get six inches overnight and the tenants expect it to be completely clear when they wake up. Personally, I think that's a little unreasonable and I'm not willing to pay for that kind of service. So my lease states the snow removal is the tenant's responsibility. I also state that the landlord will have it removed, but it may take 24 to 72 hours, thereby giving myself some leeway. Normally, all properties are cleared within 24 hours, but I prefer to set myself up to exceed the expectations set forth in the lease. I do provide each property with a shovel and salt in the front entryway as well. Keys and lockouts need to be clearly stated. I charge $50 for a lockout and $40 per lost key. I have a dedicated keyway, so my keys are a little more expensive and they cannot be copied. As an alternative, you can have a lockbox at the property for the tenants to use, or better yet, use electronic locks. There should be a requirement in the lease that the tenant notify the landlord of any damage to the premises, fixtures, or appliances within 48 hours. I also add that the tenant shall be responsible for all additional costs and damages due to their failure to notify the landlord in a timely fashion. I also have a clause that any clogged drains are the responsibility of the tenant, including repairs if needed due to the clog. I usually have my maintenance person clean and rod the drains if there is a clog, but it's in the lease in case it becomes a reoccurring problem. I know I skipped over a bunch of things that most leases have, and your attorney needs to ensure are covered, but I didn't think you want to listen to me talk about abandonment, notices, eminent domain, subordination, estoppels, holding over, criminal activity, and more of the legalese that should be in your lease, so I'll leave those to your attorney. In general, if you have an issue with a tenant, I encourage you to listen to the tenant and see if you can work it out. Actually, listening to your tenant can go a long way. Unless they are a problem tenant where listening may not help you and you should watch my toxic tenant video on how to deal with them. I hope the points I discussed help you create or modify your lease to better protect you. In the end, I rarely refer to the lease, but it's there as a backstop. Many times, your only remedy as a landlord is to perhaps try to terminate the lease or give a five day notice and start the eviction process, which is rarely what either of you want. So I encourage you to try to work it out and come to some type of agreement before going down the adversarial path of using the lease. However, when something goes wrong and the tenant is being unreasonable, it's nice to show the tenant what is in the lease and that your offer is more than what's required in the lease. This realization normally goes a long way in helping them get over their anger. Yes, the lease is intentionally structured to set me up to be in that position, but I also know that I am a responsive landlord who takes care of the property and issues quickly. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned a little something in the process. If you'd like to hear more from me, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Please like the video and leave me any comments about anything you found in your experience 
that we should all add to our leases. Thank you for watching Kenton Knows. Thank you.